Then when you build up a little bit of RPM, your brushless speed control switches into an electronic timing sequence. This is where it's able to go and measure the back EMF that is coming from your brushless motor. When it does that, it's able to adjust the timing to get in sync, and as you get further into the higher RPMs, it's going to be adjusting itself within a range. Hello, it's Ryan here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the timing that exists between a brushless electronic speed control and the brushless motor. Now, before we get started, I did want to throw this out there. If you happen to stumble across a question that someone out there on the internet is asking and they don't know the answer to it, please go ahead and use these videos to help answer those questions. I would certainly appreciate it if you're able to help someone who's stumbling upon a question that they don't know the answer to, and these videos can help them out. In addition, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that right now. Videos are coming out every single Monday. So let's go ahead and jump into our video today. Now when we talk about brushless motor timing, we are talking about the commutation that takes place in these brushless motors. And the commutation that takes place is generally done electronically. Now in order to explain timing, we have to have a reference point. The reference point is going to be the positional difference between our rotor and the stator. When we talk about the rotor, you can imagine that is the magnet that is on the shaft itself. And when we talk about the stator, we're really dialing into when a phase within that stator is electrically powered. So it's very similar to a gas engine. When the spark plug ignites earlier, it starts the explosion within the cylinder a little bit earlier. So that's a good example of when the timing is advanced, as you move that spark earlier in the sequence. The same thing happens within our brushless motors. As we go ahead and power those electric phases in our three-phase motor, we'll be able to advance the timing by bringing that a little bit earlier in the positional adjustment. So that is exactly how we're able to go ahead and advance the timing within our brushless motors. And that's exactly what the timing is referring to. So we can have timing in the ranges of about zero degrees to upwards of 20 plus degrees. When we consider high timing, we're talking about something closer to about 20 degrees. Low timing is something closer to about zero or five degrees. So what are the advantages of high brushless motor timing? Well, when we talk about the performance advantages, this is what everyone really thinks that you get. This is the only thing that you get out of timing, and that's not the case. For the most part, it is. You are getting a performance boost. That performance boost may be in very specific ranges. High amounts of timing is going to go ahead and influence the high RPM output of the brushless motor. You're able to increase that a little bit, which of course is gonna be able to draw more power. So you can expect your motor to get hotter and draw more power because of this higher RPM output. Now the other thing that high brushless motor timing can also influence is the synchronization that takes place in a sensorless mode. So if you have a censored, sensorless ESE and a sensorless motor and you're operating them and it makes that funny squealing or squeaking noise and comes to a halt, that is because you are losing the synchronization between those two components. Now if you go ahead and increase your timing, you can actually get rid of this. So this is something more we're gonna be talking about in a later video, in next video that we do. So now the advantages of low motor timing is essentially the opposite of what we just talked about. So in low motor timing, if you have something closer to that zero or five degree mark that we talked about a little bit earlier, this is going to increase the amount of acceleration on the very low end. You give up that high RPM output that the motor is able to achieve with high timing and you take that and you apply it on the low end. You're gonna get better torque resulting in better acceleration at the lower end of the RPM spectrum or range. Now, in addition to that, you typically have better efficiencies with lower timing. And what that means is we can also contribute that to longer run times, lower overall temperatures, generally speaking, a more reliable system. So if you know nothing about timing, Always going right down to the low end of the timing spectrum is your best bet. Go to that zero degrees and see if everything works out okay. If it does, you're probably okay. You may not be hitting the maximum performance that that system can provide, but you're gonna be in a good range, a good reliable range of power output. 
Now, one of the things that I did want to talk about is fixed timing versus our variable timing. And there are two components to this, and we'll slowly go through them. So in the fixed area, fixed timing, you may actually see this on brushless motors where it has on the very end of the motor on the end bell it's got this mechanical adjustment that you can adjust and what this is doing is partially adjusting the sensors within that brushless motor this is a censored motor when you go ahead and adjust the position of those sensors you are effectively changing the timing on that brushless motor and you're changing the timing relative to the speed control the speed control doesn't necessarily know that that's what's happening if it's running in censored mode that is the perfect example of fixed timing. Another good example of fixed timing is when you're operating a censored motor just in general. It is quite common that censored motors, when they run in pure censored mode, and they're not using an extra feature on top of that, are running based off of a fixed motor timing. Now there are certain instances where we can see more of like an automatic or variable timing within our brushless motor and speed control. One good example of this is our censored slash sensorless operations. Now we did talk about this in a previous video. What this is really drilling into is the operation of the speed control being able to handle both of these sort of technologies. So it operates in censored mode, gives you that fixed timing. So when you end up accelerating the vehicle, you have that predictable and constant and linear sort of acceleration. You don't have any stuttering of the brushless motor trying to get in sync with the motor in ESC. Then when you build up a little bit of RPM, your brushless speed control switches into an electronic timing sequence. This is where it's able to go and measure the back EMF that is coming from your brushless motor. When it does that, it's able to adjust the timing to get in sync, and as you get further into the higher RPMs, it's going to be adjusting itself within a range. So that is a perfect example of timing that is actually variable. It starts off with a fixed value because it's in censored mode as soon as it gets rolling and moving the radio control car in this example then it switches over to a sensorless mode and as you increase rpm the timing may actually be fluctuating within a range depending on several different factors now let's drill down into a couple different variations of this variable timing one is the most common when you get a sensorless motor you go ahead and you fire it up and that sensorless motor is operating with your sensorless ESC within a range of timing. And what you can do if you go ahead and load the software into your computer and look at the speed control using the cable as it's connected, you're able to look at the timing influence. So this is what I like to call it. Your brushless motor knows the timing that it's going to be roughly within, and you're able to go and set a low, medium, or high amount of timing. So what you're really doing here is you're pushing that timing, the one that within a range, you're, you're kind of selecting what you want within that range. So generally speaking, all speed controls will come predetermined in that default setting. Uh, it depends on the manufacturer, and from there, when you have it set there, you're not locked into the, only that timing. It's going to vary within that range, and that's gonna be handled automatically by the speed control. And this is really good, because you don't really need to know much about timing. There's a lot of people who operate radio control cars that don't know anything about timing, but they don't need to, because the sensorless ESC is handling all of that, and it handles it very well. It does not make mistakes, which is excellent. Now, a couple other things that have been tossing around in the, you know, the speed control marketing area is what is known as boost and also turbo. So these are two completely different methods of handling a censored brushless motor. What it's really doing is because the sensor brushless motor has its timing mechanically fixed in a certain location, and if you're running through that censored mode, what it does is actually skew it. I know Castle Creations calls this cheat mode where you're actually cheating the system a little bit. It's interesting how they use that sort of acronym. And if we go ahead and look at what it's doing, if you're in boost mode, this is what's gonna happen when you're in boost mode. It's going to have a specific range that you have to select. So let's assume that it's 10,000 to 20,000 RPM. The second thing is you have to pick an amount of advancement that you wanna see out of that motor. So assume that it starts off at a default zero degrees and you want to advance 15 degrees into that motor. So between your 10,000 to 20,000, it's gonna go from that zero degrees and it's gonna linearly move up in timing advance from that zero to 
whatever we said, 15 degrees or 20 degrees, and it's gonna land at that fixed endpoint right at the 20,000 RPM. That is what's happening in boost mode. You're going through that range. So you start off with fixed timing, and then as soon as you hit that certain RPM, you're gonna climb the amount of uh, advanced timing until you hit your upper threshold on your upper threshold RPM. And from there, as you increase further in RPM, it's gonna stay at that maximum amount of timing advance. That is what Castle Creations uses within their brushless electronic speed controls. Now, if we go and look at what Turbo is, it's somewhat similar, but it's quite different too. What you can do here is you can select between a couple different trigger points. And what's gonna happen here is you're gonna be able to select a trigger point with either an RPM range or a 100% throttle or even possibly both. So when you hit one of these triggers, you will have the predetermined amount of timing advance be dropped right into the motor right at that interval when you hit and pass that trigger point. So if you're hitting 100% throttle, it'll automatically feed that extra timing in there and that's what you'll see as a bonus. Now in some cases, you're actually able to provide a delay to this so that you go ahead, you punch the throttle and you hit that 100%, you go over that certain RPM, it throws the advancement in, not right away, but possibly after a small delay. The whole point around that is that you're able to possibly get into the corner, then you go ahead and punch it. You're not out of the corner yet. It takes a little bit, a fraction of a second. Once you get out of that corner and head down the straightaway, that's when the timing comes in and gives you that extra turbo boost as the name kind of implies. So as you can see, there's a couple different ways that timing is actually handled. Now the final question is, how do you know what timing is best for your application? Well, the answer to that question is really based on trial and error. You'll probably want to start on the very low end of the timing. This will keep things safe and reliable. Start at that zero degrees or whatever the ESC is considered as low and work your way up. What you'll want to have with you is a couple different methods of being able to measure either the power output or the speed that you're getting out of what you're looking at. If it's in a radio controlled car, you wanna know how fast it's going, and also the temperature. Temperature is very critical. As you move up in timing, you are gonna experience greater temperatures, either from the motor, speed control, battery, or all three. If you're able to measure the temperature as well as the power output, and if you're actually seeing any benefits from this, this is how you're able to dial in the best timing for your application. If your overall goal out of changing timing is to get faster speeds, then you'll wanna be able to measure that to make sure you can hit that goal. Now, I hope this video was able to help you out. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.